top or three of the top myths about sales that I have seen students and clients be thinking over the years. And I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to address them. And then we're going to talk about the truth instead. Um, the three that I want to share and talk through today are these three. The first, let's just jump right into it. The first one that I've seen, and you know, if you're watching this, if you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments if this is one that you have thought before as well. It's that, hey, to make a sale of whatever it is I'm selling, a coaching program, a course, anything, it's really about making sure that I nail the, the copy, the language that I'm using in my social media post to promote something, uh, to, about nailing the copy for my sales page, for my ad, for my uh, email, what, whatever it is. It's really about making sure that it's so perfect and spot on and when everything is so good, that's how I'm going to be able to make the sale. So the thing with that is, and, and by the way, a lot of these, I mean, let me think. Yeah, pretty much all three myths are misconceptions that I used to have about sales as well, because it's just where so many of us start with common misconceptions uh, that were taught about sales. Uh, I don't want anyone walking away from this video thinking that doing sales well does not mean that you need to do uh, have a good offer, good copywriting, good marketing, good sales page, good sales content, any of that. Yes, that needs to be good. But if it's good enough, then that's fine. It doesn't having a good enough sales page, sales email, whatever is like having it be any better than that. Yes, it could help improve your sales, but it's not going to be the make or break factor. It's not like I'm going to write this one email or this one promotion and how good it is, is going to determine how well I sell. So let me see. I'm seeing William saying, I do worry about whether my copy or video is perfect. Not so much to nail the sale, but because I'm a perfectionist. Ah, yes, that is a completely different issue. I totally hear you. That's something we've talked about before. And I've definitely struggled with that. So many people do. Um, but I think what I'm going to share is going to be helpful to that as well. And so what I'm going to share is this. When you are worried about having something be perfect enough, whether it's as William was saying about your, your need, your perfectionist tendencies or just your fear that I'm not going to make a sale if my copy or whatever is not good enough. The truth is what matters way more is the relationship that you have with your audience. And I'm going to give you a few examples. I'm just going to use myself because that's what's coming to mind. In the beginning of my first online business where I was doing ads consulting, that's what I, uh, the skills I had from my job at the time, I was not great at uh, doing sales. I was not super confident in my ability to connect with people. I wasn't super confident being visible, sharing content. I was not a great salesperson. I had had no tr sales training ever. And so you know, what really made the difference? Because I definitely tried the, okay, let me sit behind my screen, work on my fancy website, make sure that copy is perfect, write these really great emails that I obsessed over for so long. They didn't really help me make any sales in the beginning for many reasons. But what really made a difference was when I focused on connecting with people, when I actually spoke to them, then it was kind of like, oh, I know this Louisa woman. I know she's able to help me with the things that I want help with. It doesn't really matter so much that she's not the best salesperson in the world or she doesn't have the most perfect marketing content in the world. And so what it really matters is, yes, your stuff needs to be good enough, your offer, your sales, your marketing, but good enough is a far cry from perfect. And it does not need to be perfect. What matters way more is the relationship you've built with your audience over uh, any period of time. Sometimes people just need a, a short amount of time getting to know you before they're ready to buy. Sometimes people need months or years. And so what that looks like, how do you start building that relationship? There are quite a few um, ways to do it. 
So I'm seeing Hank saying the product sells on its own power. That's part of it, but it's absolutely not all of it because you can have the best product in the world, but there's also that relationship component, especially for coaching and courses. That is equally important. I don't care how good someone's coaching is. Well, I mean, I don't, let me not say I don't care, but if someone's coaching or course is really, really good, but it needs to, um, I need to know that person a little bit better, especially if I want to work with them as a coach, right? Then I'm going to want to know that piece as well. So it's absolutely uh, one component, but it's not the whole thing. Okay, so um, back to what I was talking about. So how do you build that relationship with your, uh, your audience? It's not complicated, right? It's really simple. I have a few things that I do consistently and I have done consistently over the years. The first thing is to show up daily pretty much. And I did this even back when I was in my demanding job and building my business on the side. Showing up daily does not have to be a big deal. You don't need to do daily live streams like I'm doing right now uh, or really anything super in depth. Back when I was in my job and I didn't have a lot of time and I was a lot slower at creating my content as well, I would simply uh, maybe write one post right on Monday and then on Tuesday I would show up by answering questions that people wrote on the, the post and then on Wednesday I would write another post and then Thursday I would answer more questions and Friday I would do a fun engagement post. Uh, it's just like, hey, here's a picture of whatever, something that's going on, just letting you guys know I'm here, I'm thinking about you, I'm a real person, I'm alive, things like that. And uh, that it can be as simple as that, showing up every day, actually talking to people. And so this is something that we've talked about before, where when you're using social media, when you're building a business, if you are doing something where you are just saying, hey, here's my amazing email, offer, product, copy, you should check it out and you should buy it and goodbye, you're not actually talking to people, that's going to not make as many sales as you would like. Let me just put it that way. Instead, what you want to be doing is realizing that this type of relationship with coaching, with courses, with social media, it's a two-way street. And what that means is you don't necessarily need to talk to every single person and you're going to get to a point in your business where that's not necessarily feasible, but you want to try and connect with as many people as possible. And so what that looks like is starting with Responding to people who comment on your content and ask you questions, right? I still to this day manage my own responses on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram, uh, on these live streams, on my ads, and it's not as much work as you would think. To be honest, most days it takes me just a few minutes, less than about five. Um, I don't handle my own email customer support that could, because that is where the majority of uh, our, our engagement volume does come in, but I try and do as many of these other ones as possible. And so it's just about getting to know your audience a little bit, even if it's something as simple as say, hey, thanks so much for the, uh, the comment, the response, right? Just having that two-way in interaction and just knowing the people in your audience. Things like that, consistently showing up every day, sharing great content, talking to people, and just continuing to build that trust in your product, in you, stuff that we actually talked about on yesterday's live stream, that's what's going to build that relationship for you and drive way more sales than just a great product, just a great uh, piece of copy or marketing or sales alone. And I mean, I see this every time in my business as well, right? I'm very good at what I do. My products are best in class. I have a mountain of testimonials for them. My copywriting, my marketing, my sales are pretty darn good. However, it's the same thing, right? There are times in my business when I take a step back, I let my systems and my team kind of run on their own while I'm doing some other things. And then there are times when I'm like, look, right now I need to show up even more for you guys. I'm going to do more content like I'm doing right now. And those are times when I see my sales skyrocket. Same products, same great marketing, uh, copy sales. The only difference is more increased engagement from me and connecting with people and building that relationship even more than I usually do. And that leads to the increased sales, right? So this is a really important thing to think through. And if you're worried about something not being good enough or not perfect enough, then that's okay. And it's never going to be perfect enough. There's always room for improvement. But what you want to focus on is getting it good enough and then focusing on the other aspects of actually knowing your people, right? Connecting on that human level, which is, I mean, it's, it's fun too.
So that was misconception number one that I wanted to share, where if you're thinking, look, someone's going to buy from me because my offer, my whatever is so perfect and spot on. Yes, there, there is an aspect of that. Let's make that clear. If you have a bad offer or your marketing or something sucks, then even if someone really likes you, they're not going to want to buy from you. So it has to be good enough, but it's not so much about that as, Hey, someone is going to want to buy from you once they realize, Oh, Hey, this offer is what I want. And I like this person. I trust them to help me. So it's absolutely, um, I would say equally important. Okay. So that is a misconception or myth. Number one, the second one that I want to talk through is, I mean, it's the most common one I would say is that sales is about being pushy or salesy or icky and that to sell, you have to kind of be manipulative or, uh, do things that don't feel comfortable to you or be salesy. Here's what, I mean, I used to think this too, by the way. I mean, I grew up in a family where sales was like, oh, it's no, we don't do that. We just do our work and you know, you don't even, you don't sell. I remember in high school, there was this one fundraiser that uh, we had, we could do if we wanted to earn, we, we were selling pens and we could earn a free ticket to the prom, which was like a ticket was $200. So I knew there was no way my parents were going to pay that if we sold 20 pins and I brought it home to my parents. I was like, prom is such a big deal. Dad, will you take this to work and help me sell some pens? And my dad said, Oh my God, no, we don't do that. Right? No, you, you, it's better that you don't go to prom than to have to do any sales. So, I mean, that's the mindset I grew up with around sales and what it took me years to really truly see and absorb and believe for myself about sales is a few things that I'm going to share with you. First, This is really key. When you realize, you take a second to realize, the people that you are selling to are smart, they are adults, they are capable of making their own decisions. What does that mean for you as someone selling something? It means no one is gonna be tricked into buying a coaching package or a course from you. They're just, they're not gonna be tricked. And so what that means is they are only gonna buy something from you if they actually want it. So you can, I mean, that alone was a huge aha for me to realize, okay, it's not about me uh, being pushy or whatever enough to, to get someone to buy from me. If someone buys from me, it's actually because they want it. They want what I can help them with. They want what it is that uh, I have to offer and they want to pay for it, right? So that's key number one, realizing that someone paying you actually wants to be there. Another thing that I realize is that when you're selling, you, you really have to believe this. Sales is of service. And again, this took me so long to really truly believe. Like I started uh, saying this to myself, but I didn't really believe it until a few years in. And you really want to think about this. How I thought through it was think about how much time, how much money, how much trial and error, pain, mistakes it took you to learn the skills that you help someone with now. For example, back when I was doing career coaching, right? My own career, I mean, I'd made so many screw ups. I had spent years kind of trying to work with, learn from so many different mentors, reading everything I could, testing it. And I mean, just missing so many opportunities because I didn't speak up, ask for promotions or raises or all of those things before I got to the point where I was able to switch industries, have a six figure salary, manage a big team. And so I knew all of those things that I had learned and gained, I was saving someone from a lot of the the things that uh, I had had to go through, right? And so you want to think through the same thing for yourself. Nowadays, what I, <clears throat> what I teach in my business um, are things that it took me hundreds of thousands of dollars of testing, investing close to a million dollars in my own mentors over the years, running a multiple seven figure business to build up. And so I know, hey, the stuff that I'm teaching, right, I'm saving someone from having to go through that same journey on their own. And that's what you want to think through for yourself where, look, you're doing something of service. You're not taking someone's money and giving a crappy product. That's not what's going on. You're giving something that's 
of more value to that person than what it is that they're paying for. You have to understand that. And if you don't believe that, then you need to first sit down and think, okay, how can I give more value than what it's worth to uh, the investment is worth to the person that I'm going to be helping? That is something you do have to work through, right? And it can be as simple as writing down, hey, what was everything I had to go through, pay, invest, whatever, to get the skills that I now help people with? Um, what, what is it worth to someone to have the results I'm going to be able to help them with? And this works no matter what industry you're in, right? It's the same process, the same principle. And you have to get to that point where you truly believe, okay, I'm doing something of service. And yes, there's going to be an exchange of value. I'm going to provide that service, that result. And the, the transfer of value is going to be through that investment, and realizing, okay, the person who is going to be buying from me, they want it and they're smart. They're not going to be tricked or pushed into, into buying this, right? That's just not how it works. And so I can share with full uh, belief and conviction that the thing that I want to uh, sell and the thing that they want, there's alignment there. Part of where this fear of being pushy comes in is kind of the attachment to the outcome. Like, oh, what if so-and-so doesn't buy from me? Uh, what, what's that going to mean? What if I don't make any sales? What does that mean? And the thing that you, that we all, not just you generically, that we all have to really kind of work through, and this takes time. I have totally been there. It took me a really long time, is to release that attachment to the sale where you're able to say, look, I believe in uh, what it is that I'm offering and, and teaching, right? Just like we've been talking about right now. Um, I know that the person who's going to want it is going to want it. It's my job to build that relationship, to build that credibility, that trust, to share the value of my offer, to have a really good product. All the things that we've been talking about today, those things are your job. But the rest, the, hey, who's going to buy? When are they going to buy? That's on the other person. And so what that allows you to do is it allows you to sell from a place of, I know my stuff is good. I know it's for the right people at the right time for them. And the, the, you know, the, when they buy or if they buy is up to them. And so, I mean, I always walk my talk. Those of you who've been in my audience for any amount of time know that that's the case. I mean, it's, it's what I've always done and will continue to do. And it's a really fun, great way to sell, right? I love sharing my free content. It's really good. And yes, I, um, I unapologetically mention my courses and products when I feel like it, when I'm promoting something, right? I just did that yesterday. And it's, it's very much a very natural thing for me to talk about free stuff and talk about my paid stuff. It, they go hand in hand. But there's no, hey, you have to buy from me, or I'm not saying, oh my gosh, you know, if you've watched this free content, you have to buy. No, it, that's not how it works. I'm not being pushy about it. I'm saying, hey, look, I know it's great. If you want it, when you want it, here it is. And I've had people over the years who've been on my email list for years before they ever bought a single product from me. It's when it's the right time for them and the right product, right? And so that's something that, by the way, it took me years to release that attachment. So I'm not saying this is something that needs to happen immediately or that is easy, but it is something that if you start thinking about it now and practicing it, then it will absolutely get easier and easier to do. So that's myth slash misconception number two. Um, myth slash misconception number three, the final one that I want to cover today is this misconception that when you are making a sale, when you're handling objections, whether it's on a sales call, right? Someone's objection, like, I don't know if this is worth it. Now's not the right time for me. Uh, I don't know if I can afford this. I need to go talk to my partner, common objections, right? Whether you're talking about them in, or I don't know, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember if I just said, it, will this work for me? That's another common objection. Um, whether you're talking about it on a sales call or whether you are talking about it uh, in an email, on a sales page, it doesn't matter the medium. Handling objections happens no matter your, your sales, your, the type of sales process you're doing. There's this misconception that handling those objections is about convincing someone. Convincing someone that, hey, now is the right time for you to do this. Convincing someone that, you know, you can't afford this. Convincing someone that, uh, what, what else? What, what were the top objections I said? Oh, that this will work for you. Um, and it's not from a place of wanting to be pushy or salesy. It's just another misconception that we are taught or so many of us are taught just naturally. I mean, I know that's what I thought, right? I had that really common image of, oh, used car salesman. If I'm handling objections, I'm being like that used car salesman saying, you need to buy now, you need to buy now. 
And that's not the truth at all. Because again, this goes back to, and this is so key, like we were talking about, the people who want to buy from you, they are smart. They are human beings who want to be there. And so when you are handling an objection, which does come up, it's natural, right? We're plunging down a significant amount of hard-earned money, no matter what the amount is, on something that we hope will work for us. And so we want to think through all of these things as buyers. And as a, to be honest, as a seller, you want your customers to be thinking through these things because the people who do are the ones who are really seriously thinking through, all right, am I going to make the most of this? Am I going to use it to get the actual results? And am I going to, you know, be coachable, be a good customer? So what the reframe is, is it's not about convincing someone to overcome those objections. That doesn't really work that well anyways, because I mean, think about it. If you're trying to sell something, you're trying to convince someone to buy it. It just, it doesn't work that well. Think about times when someone has tried to convince you like, oh, you need to buy this or whatever. You know, whenever someone says that to me, I I go the other way. Um, And so what it is really about reframing is about coaching and teaching. Now, here's what I mean. I don't mean it's about coaching or teaching more uh, free information uh, or giving for free what you would give a, a client, right? That's not what I'm saying here. It's not about, okay, I'm on a sales call and this person doesn't believe I can help them. So let me just give them some free coaching uh, to prove that. It's not about proving. It's not about convincing. What it is about, especially if you've been doing the things that we have been talking about, right? Um, the things where you're building a relationship with your audience, you're working on uh, showing up, releasing attachment, all the things we just talked about, which are really key. Then what naturally follows is you are at this point where you are coaching someone through their own thought process for handling the objections. And I really want to talk about this a little bit. Because my philosophy as a coach and as a teacher is, you know, I don't consider myself a coach and I I don't teach my uh, students to be coaches in like the the most traditional sense of the term, where coaching is something where you 100% don't tell a, a client what to do. You ask them questions to draw out. So because the assumption is that they know what it is they want to do. Like, how do you feel about it? What would you like to do? That's very traditional coaching. And there is an aspect of that in what I do, right? Where I will, for example, say, hey, well, um, what product feels better to you? What business model? Like, how many hours do you want to work? What strategies do you enjoy based on your personality? Here are some options, and here's what I recommend. So there is a little bit, there not a little bit, there's a good bit of that, um, but that's not the the main thing that I do either. What I do is I think of myself as half coach, half consultant, where there are points where I will just come in and I will teach and say, hey, no, this is what you need to be doing right now, given where you are, right? So it's a combination of the two. And beyond that, what I teach is not just uh, where I'm going with this is that coach consulting model is not just about, hey, let me um, uh, teach you the tactic or the thing to do right now. What I'm also teaching, and you guys can see I do it in my live streams, on my emails, really all my content is also the understanding of the principle, the strategy behind the tactic or whatever it is I'm teaching so that you can think for yourself and apply that principle to different tactics down the road. It's like that common uh, saying, right? Teach a guy or give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish and you'll feed him for his lifetime. So that's the principle I usually try to adhere to when I'm teaching slash coaching slash coach salting. Anyway, so back to this. What you are wanting to do on in the sales process is to step into that place of being the coach to coach someone through their own thought process. Because when someone is in disbelief, the the most powerful thing you can do for them as a coach, as a teacher, as potentially their actual coach down the road is not to tell them what to think, not to convince them, not to try and prove anything. That doesn't work as powerfully anyways. It's to coach them through their own fears and thoughts that are coming up for that objection. Because that's what's really going on. There's some fear, there's some doubt, right? So, um, and I mean, there are instances, by the way, where it's not. If you're not, sometimes they just need to go and do more research. When If you identify that's the case, then tell them to go do that, right? I, I wanted to mention that. But really, for example, one of the most common things is, look, I'm not sure this will work for me. 
And what that comes down to is, all right, you either don't believe I'm the person who can help you, where if you've been doing all the other things we've been talking about, showing up consistently, sharing good content, believing in your product, so on and so forth, and sharing that, right, that shouldn't be so much of an issue. What the real issue is, is they don't believe if they will um, do the work or do what's needed or be the type of person needed to get the results that they want, that you can help them with. And so what it's up to you to do is to coach that person through, okay, what's going on? Why are you scared that this won't work for you? And uh, why are you scared that you won't do the work? Is it because you've never done the work in the past? Is it because you don't see yourself as someone who can do it? How can we coach you through this place where you either know, hey, yes, I'm ready to change things and make it work with the accountability, the support of a course or a, a coach, or no, you know what, you know, I'm, I want this, but I'm not ready for it yet. And that's the piece that you coach someone through where they are convincing themselves. And sometimes that convincing ends in a no, by the way, let's, let's be clear on that. But often if you are doing that, instead of trying to convince or to prove, which like I said, doesn't work, that's where it starts feeling really salesy and does not work that well. Anyways, where instead, if you're talking through this and stepping into your coaching shoes in that manner, that leads to a way more fulfilling sales conversation, sales, better clients, to be honest, because if you have to drag someone into a course uh, or a coaching program, you have to convince them, you're going to have to drag them through the entire thing. And that does not make for a good uh, teacher, student, coach, client relationship. It does not have them help your client or student get great results. And it's to be honest, not great for you, your business, your reputation, or just your life in general, right? And so it's about teaching from day one, from that very first sales process, whatever that is, and, and stepping into your coaching shoes to coach someone, help them um, find that solution that for themselves. So that's really more of that piece of the sales process versus the common idea or misconception that it's about convincing someone, right? And so those are the three myths that I wanted to talk through and share today. Thank, thank you guys, as always, for, for being here and for making this fun. Bye, everyone.